So we've talked about vocal effects a little bit and how there's kind of two scenarios that will arise. They're either at the venue already or you're bringing your own. Now, there actually is a third thing. They're at the venue and you want to bring your own and use them anyway. So that becomes a negotiation with the sound person about making sure that they're not doubling up on the things that you're bringing. So let's imagine you've brought a fairly simple vocal processor with you and you want to use it on stage. Let's go over the hookup. The vocal processor typically will act as an intermediary between your mic and wherever it's going to end up, the mixer, then out to the speakers and all that kind of stuff. So there are a couple of little things you have to worry about in order to make sure that everything works. We talked about gain being the key thing. So when I plug in a vocal processor, instead of my mic going into the board, like I said, there's this intermediary process. It goes into the vocal processor first. Now, in order for this vocal processor to use the signal from my mic, it has to be gained. It's going to be gained inside the vocal processor. So in this particular one, I've got a little knob on the side and I would sing into it, hey, hey, and I would look for these green, red, yellow lights, oh, it's too loud, and I would turn it up and down until I get the right signal level going through it. But now, this has already created the right amount of gain, which means if we send that higher gain to this mixer here, we might overload that mixer. So we have to just be mindful, and the sound person, if you're communicating with one of them, has to be mindful that as you connect, another cable from your processor here out to the mixer. Once it goes in here and I sing, hey, hey, the level, hey, hey, I used to be just about at zero here when we did this before. Now I've got, oh, three or four little notches up here on the, on the, uh, the level that I'm coming up higher than I was before. I'm going to have to turn down the gain on the mixer here in order for this to all level out evenly. Hey, hey, there we go. It wasn't much of a tweak. It was quite small. But if you were right on the bleeding edge of, of clipping and distorting, that might actually push you over the edge. And the sound person, if they're not used to these kinds of things, may say, hey, you're sending me way too hot a signal. They often will expect a certain signal to come out of a certain microphone. When they don't get what they expect, it can throw them off. And just having that dialogue ahead of time can make it really, really easy to understand that we're doing some gain here, we're going to have to do less gain there. Interacting with that sound person and setting yourself up for success is really key to making this all work. The actual effects that you use and how small or giant and gregarious they are really has actually little bearing on the setup itself. Once you get those gains right, You've just now taken the power of the vocal effects and put them in your own hands. Now nobody's going to tell the Edge that he can't bring his own guitar rig to the stadium. He's going to bring his own stuff. You might start off first of all with your own mic. At least it doesn't smell like somebody else's armpit. And then you might move on to some vocal effects. And we've learned how to connect the mic to the vocal effects, keep that gain staging correct, and send it out to the mixer. And anything that you want to do with it from there is your power to control your sound and your vocals the way you want to.